Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Estes Angling. You're joining me for a chilled day's winter fishing today. And if you haven't guessed already from the background, we're at Wrightington Fisheries and we're gonna be fishing Rivington View. I haven't actually been fishing in the best part of a month. I've been really ill. I've had this uh, bad flu that's been going around and then I've been coughing my guts up for about two or three weeks after that. My dad's been out of the game as well. He's uh, done his ankling in the garden, but we're both back on it today we're both back on it and uh yeah we're looking forward to a good session my dad came last week without me and he had a really good session here at Wrightington, so that's why we've decided to come here today and we haven't fished it in ages i think it's been probably it was probably summer the last time we came to Wrightington, and we do love it here it's a great fishery the owner's always uh, really helpful really polite and also a really reasonable price and as well you can fish two rods which we like doing I think there's a match on today, but it's all the way down this side here. We're over there next to the aerator. The aerator will probably go off, uh, I don't know, about half seven. It usually goes off about half seven and uh, it'll be a bit quieter then. So I've got myself in a semi setup position. I just need to put the rods together, get some hook lengths on and uh, out they go. I've mixed some pellets up. I've just done a 50-50 mix of my own pellets. I've gone with a caramel cream dream and also the chalky orange halibut. So you get that contrast of light and dark colors. I think that works really well on the method feeder. Also, I'm gonna be trying to get some underwater footage for you. Now, Wrightington is actually quite clear. I've been struggling to get really good underwater footage because our Northern commercials are really murky, really silty, but I mean, this looks pretty silty and pretty murky, but if you can see in the margin there, there's a little bit of visibility. So when that sun comes up a bit and we get a bit of brightness over the top, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some good underwater footage. I actually had a little bit of trouble with one of my underwater cameras. I've had to send that back. That was the Western Escape Cam. It broke after about three months. Basically, the mechanism for turning it on, you screw the cap down and it wasn't touching the on button for some strange reason. So pretty bad design flaw in my opinion. But uh, I've got myself a water wolf underwater camera. So that's gonna be uh, getting cast out today. And hopefully it's a little bit better, but we'll have to see. Like I said, uh, these underwater cameras are not really geared up for our murky, silty Northern commercials, but I really wanted to get a bit of an insight into what's going on on the bottom and things like that. Right, so the setup today, I'm gonna be fishing my specimen rods. I'm going to have two out towards the middle where it's slightly deeper. That's where my dad were catching last week. He's been nice enough to put me in the best swim. And these are my pellets. Like I said, I've already mixed them and it's just a 50-50 mix of light and dark pellets there. And there we go. I don't want it to seem like I'm selling you my gear, folks. If you want to have a look on the website, you're more than welcome to at www.westesangling.co.uk. Uh, all reasonably priced and I've uh, just brought out a couple of glazers as well which I'm going to be trying today. We've got a sweet candy there. Uh, we've also got the super sherbet which matches the pellets. I'm going to be going with the Westies wafters of course. My dad's been fishing for the best part of probably half an hour now and uh, he's had a couple of bites which is a good sign. It's fairly mild today as you can see really nice morning and um, we're here for first light today. Right folks let's get into the video. So there's a 50-50 mix. I'm just gonna tap them out into my bait tub there. They're perfect then, they'll be right. Soaked them for about a minute or so, not too long. And I just wanna say a quick thank you and shout out to one of my subscribers, Rob. He's actually an upholsterer and he's made me one of these absolutely awesome cases for my underwater cameras. Uh, so I will put his details in the description if you want any bits and pieces making they're really good quality these and that's just going to protect my cameras in my bag he saw me using the socks last time to protect them and I think it's done his head in so uh, he's, he's sent me a couple of them so nice of him I really appreciate it I think we'll struggle to go anywhere these days dad and not be not be recognized on these commercials <laughs> a couple of chaps down there have just come and said hello to us <laughs> It's nice though, isn't it? Yeah, it is nice. Right, I need to get these rods out. I'm not even bloody fishing yet. Right, let's get this one out first and then I'll, uh, I'll get the camera out. Like I said to you, ah, God, right in my finger. Like I said to you, 
be starting with the Westies wafters. Might try a bigger wafter in a bit on the on the underwater camera. I tied up some slightly bigger hooks. These are a size 12. And I've, I've actually still got the hook length on from last time. So I'm being really lazy today. Proper chilled days fishing. Uh, first session back in a while. So I didn't want to do anything too complicated. I didn't want to do any kind of reviews or anything like that. The fishery reviews will be starting back up though in the next couple of weeks. So that's something to look forward to. And I will be getting back to my regular videos of one video, maybe even two videos a week if I can find the time. Obviously I do work full time. I work six days a week. But hopefully I'll be able to find the time to get a couple of videos out for you. I'm going to go straight out here with this one. There's a deeper, there's a bit of deeper water. So let's at least get fishing. Spot on that. Let's tighten up to it. These are a 35 gram method feeder. Just check my vital arms are nice and quiet. Don't want to be doing anybody's heads in if there's a match on. They'll be fine then. Bait runners on. I need to drop my tip down a little bit. It's hard because of the pegs, but I should be able to get it a bit closer to the water surface. It's fairly windy today, so I don't want the wind catching the line or anything. Always oh, seem to have better success when my rod tips are lower. Oh no, I didn't put any glaze on. Well, I'm, I'll recast this one pretty quick anyway, and I'll stick some glaze on it next time. Got me new glazes, I'm not even trying them. Which one do you want to try today, Dad? Do you want to go with sweet candy or super sherbet? Which, what's that orange one? Super sherbet. I'll try that. So that leaves me with the sweet candy. I usually, on the first cast, I'll recast it pretty quick. Uh, start getting a bit of a better bait going. So we're actually in the first week of March now. Temperatures have been pretty consistent. We've had a bit of a cold snap last week, uh, but the fishing's been pretty good up till then. I know that a couple of my subscribers went out after the cold snap and they struggled. So hopefully it's started to pick back up now. It's been mild for maybe five or six consecutive days. But yeah, lovely morning. I'm just waiting for that sun to come up so I can get it. The, there's no point in me putting the underwater camera out until we've got a bit of light above us. Uh, it just won't work very well. What are you fishing on, Daddy? On the Westies Wafters or are you trying something else? Westies Wafters, both rods. <laughs> I'm just going to throw on the other Westies. <laughs> there's no point in me pumping them all, is it? <laughs> Look at all these he's got here and he's only using one kind. So he's got some Aqua Stim 2 t and he's got some... F1 Supreme, Sonia Bates, Mainline Match, and he's using the good old Westies Wafters, the originals as well. The originals without the uh, proper packing on and out. <laughs> the only reason for these two pegs doing so well is definitely that, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's going to be that, isn't it? It's got to be, yeah. You'd think, though, even though the is on this point here, isn't it? Yeah. You think those two pegs across. Oh, there you go. Half seven. It's on a timer, is it? 25 plus, yeah. Must be on a timer. Yeah. And you think them two pegs are crossing? Because it's you? forcing air, it's forcing oxygen into the water, pushing it that way. But well, I think they are good. I think that is a good peg. I've, I always see people catching there. Yeah. So maybe maybe that is the reason. But the, I don't think enough fisheries are proper aerators running like he does here at Wrightington. No, they don't have a running in winter. No. They, they'll only have a running in summer. I think it's just as important in winter. I know it costs money. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. I bet I they're really it, expensive to run. But it, I think it makes a big difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the other the other week where I were catching, then breed that shoulder breed you definitely must have been moving through. Yeah. They must work their way around that island. Because you were getting batches but, of them. Yeah, because it all of a sudden bump and it were bream after bream after bream then. Yeah. You know what I mean? I definitely think they'll show up round the island and they'll probably just move from, from patch of bait to patch of bait. But what what sort of sizes were the bream that you were getting last week? Um 
from from a pound to about two and a half. Mm. They're not as they're not as big an area as they are at, at High Hayes or Liverbury. No, no, they're not. Um, they're, they're, they're a smaller stand. But you're more likely to catch carp here at Wrightington. Mm. You'll get a consistent amount of carp even even through the winter. Yeah. We've had yeah. good sessions in December. It usually starts picking up around this time of year here for the carp. And uh, like I say, you had a, you had quite a few carp last week, didn't you? But the uh, biggest eleven pound ish. No, no, they weren't. Oh, they they weren't massive. No, I think the biggest probably six, seven pound mark. That was that was for, first chuck. The, the rest were only around the two pound mark. Mm. Uh, they, they, they weren't massive carp. They weren't the biggest stamp that's in here. Um, well, like I said, quite a few tench, but the tench aren't as big as in. Uh, no, no, not, not no. Well, he's just he's, he's stocked. Stop he's stocked here. a lot. He's stocked a lot more tench now. I do. I think they get pretty. I think they're about three. They get to about two, three pound in here. Oh yeah. yeah they, they but, um, but they'll the be few and far between. Is, the average stamps are all. Oh. It's nice here though. It's a nice setting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well maintained. Yeah, it is well it's maintained. Doing a lot of work on pegs. It keeps them all nice and tight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at how look at how neat it is. Everything's been trimmed back. All the islands neat, he's been around the island, you can tell that he's cut everything back there. Uh, just really nice looking fishery, all the edges trimmed. Lovely. And that's what you want, you want a, you want a nice, well maintained fishery because you know that the owners obviously take pride in. In their, uh, the fishing and the stock and things like that. But I'm actually going to recast this now. It's probably been in about 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to recast it. We'll start building a better bait up because I think they'll be on it today. Well, at least that's what I'm hoping anyway. So let's do it. Right. Let's get this back out and we'll, uh, we'll stick some glaze on it this time. Like I said, I'm not scared about putting a good amount of feed out today because I've got a feeling that they'll be on the feed. There's the glaze. Nice, thick, pink colour. Really sweet flavour. You probably won't be able to see this on the GoPro because it's not good at focusing in on small stuff. These are the, the rigs that I've tied up for the underwater camera. They're a six inch rig and basically they're just like a normal method feeder rig but slightly longer and I'll just loop, just loop them with the underwater cam. So uh, I'll be able to put a wafter on the end of there, put a PVA bag on. <coughs> Sorry folks, still got that lingering cough after my flu so put a PVA bag on underarm it out and uh, we're good to go hopefully we'll see it breaking down on the bottom if we've got enough light it's fairly cloudy today might get a bit brighter later on oh no my sour pets have ripped <laughs> that's not good folks is it oh no they only last the season these sour pets look, look at that my fox ones Right at crotch. Well, maybe it's because I'm putting on a few pounds. Can't blame the pants. Just try and hook it through a few times like that. That's only going to go through twice, I think. Well, as you can see, the PVA bag stayed on nicely for the cast and it kicks it out perfectly away from the camera, even on that short, like, method feeder style hook length. And that's landed absolutely brilliantly there, right in front of the camera. I could actually do with, like, making a little bit of an attachment to go on the bottom of the camera just to prop it up off the lake bed slightly so we can see what's going on. And I've also bought a small underwater torch just to give it a bit more light. But you can see the PVA bag's already started to dissolve. 
and it's really quick actually i was shocked at how quick the pva mesh dissolves even at this time of year you can see that the waft has actually already detached itself there away from the mesh bag already and it's slowly starting to break down so i'm just going to speed this up a touch for you here this is times four speed and you can see that bags burst open and some of the baits covering the wafter but there's already fish looming above this bait uh, ready to start feeding on it well folks i'm not sure if it's light enough but the underwater cam is out so we'll see what kind of footage we get there can only try can't we the underwater footage stuff is definitely something to follow along for and uh, join me on my underwater footage journey on the commercials so on that note now's your chance to hit that subscribe button and also if you do enjoy the video please give it a like and also if you've got any questions at all about anything that we've done today or in any of my other videos please don't hesitate to drop a comment in the comment section so as a thank you for watching my videos and sticking with me through the tough winter I will be giving away a Wesley's Angling Towel in this video. So all you need to do to be in with a chance of winning that is share the video with an angling friend, follow me on the Wesley's Angling Instagram or Facebook, and also make sure that you drop a comment in the comment section. That is it. Subscribe to the channel, share the video with an angling friend, give us a follow on one of the social media accounts if you haven't done already, and drop a comment in the comment section. That is it. You'll be entered in and I'll choose somebody at random or I'll get my dad to choose somebody at random so it's fair oh, we're in folks save the blank Breen so I'm going to chat with Paul the owner nice one it's probably about the size that they go to in here Right, let's get back well first fish dad's had a couple of runs but it's not materialized into anything probably just small bream just picking it up on his bait runner running with it and then and then dropping it could be small bream little tench tend to do that so uh, i think you're skimmers because you're using qm1 hooks that dad <laughs> I, I hate qm1 hooks i don't know what it, i know i know there's people out there that probably really like them but they're not yeah. for me <laughs> <laughs> they're not for me we have a bit of a running joke about it, me and my dad, they're just, uh, they're not my cup of tea, I like a nice wide gate feeder hook. Come on, you had a, have, you, you said let's come here because I had an absolutely brilliant week last well, week and it now? you've I led me on. I probably had uh, oh, three carp and three or four tench by this time, the other week when I was here. False promises folks. <laughs> three carp, it first three chucks. Mm. Not today. Well, that's the way it goes in winter, though, isn't it? Well, that's, that's <laughs> to be it. fair, that's the way it goes in general, isn't it? But yeah, that's why I just think it's a little bit early for us to be starting the fishery reviews back up because it's it very hit and miss, yeah. It is, yeah, it is hit and miss. So, the last. Got plenty of suggestions to try, though. Plenty of fisheries to visit. So, I'm looking forward to starting them again, but it's probably going to be maybe towards the end of March. Something like that, eh? Yeah. Before we, before we start before we start them back up obviously it's first week of march now so we're only a few weeks away but i think the temperatures will settle a bit so. I mean, it's been cold hasn't it really? yeah. last two or three nights you know when was it two nights ago it was really frosty yeah it was, it was really frosty the that was cars been frozen right over and that really cold mate don't know whether to have a recast on left hand rod or just leave it. Might leave it. I think it's going to be a while between bites today. You've got to judge it, folks. You've got to judge it, Annie, because it's like if you're getting runs every 15 minutes, then you might as well recast often. But I know a lot of you struggle with how often you should cast out. I get asked that all the time. How often should I be casting out? What time of year? 
you've got to judge it on the amount of fish that you're catching so if you're if you're having loads of runs to like to be fair we are having today just not materializing into anything or if you're having you know multiple fish in quick succession you want to be casting out more often however if the bites are slow you want to be finding in a deeper water and you want to be leaving it 45 minutes uh, yeah oh yeah nice high-sided method feeder so that the pellets stay in and leaving it about 40 minutes that's what i suggest because I've, I've had bites after 50 minutes and the carp's come along and oh yeah hoovered it up so they just need to be moving through or well, you might get lucky sometimes and land it on the nose of a fish and it goes within five ten minutes in winter it's just one of them things don't be scared about casting around either i'd say in winter no no search for don't. fish We're, we've never been we've never been a big advocate of fishing mega like uh accurate have we we just we tend to tend to just move around slightly they're always there or thereabouts but um you know don't be scared of moving it a few foot in either direction sometimes the carp can be feeding on literally a dinner plate sized area that they've hollowed out carp do that they'll dig into the bottom of the lake and and they have particular feeding spots they'll not take it if it's no and they'll not take they'll not take it if it's put one way or other yeah sometimes. so it, and, and if you do find that spot then that's the time to be accurate Hmm. So, I'm going to leave it at least another 15 minutes, I reckon. Here he is, he's in. Carp. Yeah, this is. Look at that, look at that stance, that poise. <laughs> you got your drag set on roach drag, Dad, or? <laughs> or is it a big one? No, it's, he's, he's got it on ropes, drag. <laughs> <laughs> is it a common? Oh, uh, bad netting. Get pressure. Pressure's getting to him. First fish. <laughs> Watch it for going under that thing, Dad. <laughs> it's an absolute it's a tibbler. <laughs> oh no, it's all right actually. It's about four, three, four pound. We'll give him three or four pound for that, folks. Nailed right in the corner of the mouth on the old Westies wafter. You got it. I feel my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a battered common, but good start. Felt heavy in that net, it was a long fish. Long commons always give the best battle, 100%. Yeah, was really good you see how you don't need a mould with these feeders, you literally just thumb them in. Bit of the uh, sherbet glaze. Oh! Drop back that. Let's get into it. It's a carp as well, so they might be moving through. It's not a big one. Oh no, it's not. It's a bream. <laughs> hey, we're pulling that then. We're pulling. You put me in a bream swim, Dad. Oh, two bream. Yeah, that one was in better condition than the last one. Yeah, it was. Right, let's get it back out. That water, folks, is absolutely freezing. That bream then was half frozen, honestly. So that had been in 20 minutes. Hopefully it's picking up or there's a shoal of bream in the swim. A couple of you have said, you know, do I only fish for carp? Do I never fish for silvers? We'll fish for anything, folks, honestly anything not bothered about what we catch 
at all as long as we're catching that's the main thing pleasure anglers we're not bothered about absolutely bagging up all the time we just come here try and enjoy ourselves we're outside spend time with my dad get him out of the house that's what it's all about he ripped his bobbin off it's a little carp. I couldn't decide what it was then. I was looking at it. I thought, is it a really fat roach? Is it what? Well, it's a little, um, it's a little carp. It, it's fins threw me off. Hold it up, Dad. Let's have a look at it. It's a, it's a weird little thing. No, not that one. Common, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful looking fish. Why not using your Wes's angling towel? It's uh... Come on Dad. Marketing, bag. advertising. It's in my lure bag. Hmm. You need another one then. Make sure you comment, you might win the giveaway Dad. <laughs> oh, you're the one. Yeah, that's a cap. Always give you the best peg. That's the problem. <laughs> it might be that sherbet glaze. I might um, might put some of that on mine. Might be that. Who knows? Oh, it's a tench. This is probably about as big as they're getting right into. They might get a touch bigger. Hold it up, Dad. Let's have a let's have a nose at it. That's a nice one, that. Yeah. Nice one. Ooh. I might have a bit of a recast, actually. Absolute mix. Oh, mine's gone. Mine's gone. Mine's gone. That's a cap, surely. Surely, folks. <sighs> right into some fisheries, eh? What's a man got to do to get a fish on an underwater camera, though? They just. All of them have been on this left hand rod. I might swap them over, see if I can trick them. Camera shy. Camera shy. <laughs> it's quite funny that day. It's quite funny for you that. Eh? Yeah. Is that yours a bream? Yeah. We've got a scraggy looking mirror. Carp though. Carp's a carp. Slightly bigger than yours. Oh, it's actually not a bad fish that day. For you. What are you giving me for this one, folks? Five pound? Nah. Maybe. Something like that. Oh, I've got my Wessie's wafter back in the net there. For a commodity, then. Can't see them being around forever, folks. So if you don't have some, stock up. Oh, there we go. The rest is off the back. Look at that. Oh, got some energy now. Ooh. I might put it back. There we go. Four and a half? Four and a half. Let's go four and a half on that one. Oh. Yeah. Right, I wonder if I can trick them. If I swap the rods over. I don't know. Let's leave it. We'll leave it in a bit longer. Can't beat a wafter recovery. Here we go. Huh? Of course. Dad, you're not allowed to say Westy's wafters. We got shouted out for saying Westy's wafters too many times in the last video. <laughs> I think everybody just automatically assumes what we're fishing on now. <laughs> Bring that sherbet glaze over, Dad. Let me put some on. Yeah, uh, with you. Starting to 
crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do. Decent amount. Feel like a nice green. Yeah, I, I think it would. Uh, not for human consumption, though, folks. Just a bit of a disclaimer there. Not for human consumption, says it on the packet. showing my ass there we go at this point i actually had a couple of bleeps register on the bite alarms on the underwater camera rod and i wanted to put the clip in and show you what caused it as you can see on all these commercials so far there's a thick layer of silt on the bottom probably about an inch or an inch and a half of silt and as soon as any kind of fish comes near the area feeding, it stirs it up and reduces the visibility to almost nothing. So this is a bream. It sucked up the Westies wafter there, caused a couple of bleeps on the bite alarms, but just that little tiny feeding action there has clouded the water up and reduced the visibility to nothing. So if you can imagine, you get a shoal of these bream in or a shoal of carp and they're sucking and blowing on the bottom, there's going to be zero visibility. So that's why it's so important to use a, a bright wafter or a certain color wafter. But you can see just how long it takes that silt to settle back down. You can just about see the wafter there. But the fish has moved off. It's spooked. So it's cleared up a bit here. You can see there's a small roach moving in and out. There's a bream again coming in, feeding on the pellets in the area, stirring the silt up on the bottom ridiculously. But you can see just how much that hook length's buried into that silt. And this is only a small hook length, and I'm using a wafter. So you can imagine if you add, I don't know, a fairly heavy lead on here, you're just going to sink right into that silt. But I didn't know there were this many roach in, so I've learned something from this underwater footage. There's roach bobbing in and out of the camera all the time here. There's, uh, there's one of them now. <laughs> but just cruising round, checking it out, probably checking out the camera as well. These fish will be really inquisitive. But I honestly just find it so amazing how much disturbance on the bottom these small fish can make. Like, this little roach here spooks in a second and it just it just completely stirs the bottom up there you go so you know you get a few of them happening and the fish are just going to be using scent alone to find your bait so yeah that's why i think it's important to use glugs on these commercials how many fish are we on there pops you've had i've had two bream one carp Not a bad start. And what are we on? Oh, God. It's quarter to nine already. We'll probably be fishing through till about, I don't know, half two-ish. Three o'clock today, something like that. We'll have a decent session today. I've not got anything to rush back for, so... Yeah, just um, a bit slow, that first day, is Mmm. But that breeze has picked up again, so it could be that. Bringing them on the feed. I think we've got a bream on here, folks. I don't know, Dad. Yeah, I know, I think a decent bream. Either a decent bream or a tench, yeah. It's a bream. Like I said, a good one. It's like they're waking up. They're a bit, they've, they've got some energy in them. I thought a couple of times that they're, they're definitely not bream. Oh, that is a good one. Probably about as big as you get in here. That. Oops. Get out of it, Westy. Get out of it. Hooked in the bottom of the lip. That's weird. I never usually get that on the method. Oh. Dad's in again. Dad's not in again. <laughs> He's come off again, I think. These chucky orange halibut pellets are very, very strong smelling. Really nice. I 
absolutely load that with glaze. I'm just going to trickle a few pellets over the top. Just helps the glaze stay on. Still dripping off like, needs to be quicker. Let's line out so we can underarm it. time and then I'll swap the rods over and we'll see if we can get a bite on the underwater camera come on I might even try that one a little bit closer I don't want anything on it I'll have a bream on it I'll take a bream on it come on whether the camera puts them off or not I don't know it's a little bit bigger that water wolf camera than the other one was than the western escape cam was but um this seems to be built better I don't know just one of them things. The Western Escape Cam one was really small. Mm. But yeah, yet to catch a fish on the underwater cam. I'm hoping today's the day. Here we go, folks. Second PVA bag going out. I've actually swapped them over this time and the PVA bag's going out on the left-hand side. Uh, this time it actually falls a little bit closer to the camera which gives us a better view of the bag breaking down. As you can see, there's a few different colors of pellets in there and the different colored pellets contrast differently to the bottom of the lake. And that's why I've actually started using two contrasting pellets in my method feeder fishing. I think it makes a massive difference. The dark pellets stand out against the bottom of the lake bed and they also help the light pellets stand out a bit more as well. As you can see, nice visibility on the pink wafter there. A lot more visible than the other colours uh, that are breaking down on the bottom there. More visible than the pellets, so on and so forth. But you can see how using a PVA bag, mesh or solid, actually sits on top of the silt. It doesn't sink into the silt. That wider surface area really helps it out there. I've just swapped my underwater camera out to the left hand side here and I'm going to put my <laughs> method feeder out on the right but my dad's very right I'm going to get all the fish on the right hand side now oh dear can't win can you try my best that's all I can do quick clip here folks Comment down below, what kind of fish do we think this is? Is it a perch? I think I can just about make out the stripes on it. So I'm going to say it's a perch. What do we think? Doesn't really look perch shaped, but I think I can make out the stripes. So obviously you can use this glaze in a couple of ways. You can add it directly to your, your pellets and your ground bait and give them a little bit of a boost that way and it also makes them a little bit more sticky or you can add it straight into the water to give it a boost of flavour and sweetness when you're mixing your ground bait up or you can put it directly on top of your method feeders like that a few different ways same with any glaze glug or whatever <sighs> knew it Wrong bleed inside. Oh, hook's come out of the net. Let's look it. But the hook is also stuck in the net. The bream. Bream day today, I think. Well, it just shows you that they might be put off by the camera which is a shame maybe it's going to have to be summer when they're feeding a little bit more readily and they're not too skittish I'm sure we had a bit of a take on it before so whether it's going to upped itself against the weight of the camera I don't know it's a possibility could just try it on a single hook bait I think I'll do that next cast
a single tone of that, Dad. Weird, jaggedy fight. Yeah, I think you're right, Dad. Ooh, really weird fight. Look at that, look at it go. See the marauds in there? More, maybe a small carp, Dad, a little tiny carp. Oh, I tense you right. Similar sort of size to yours, I think. Who's had the most fish now? Are we on level pegging? Look at this one, Dad. It's a lovely gold colour. It's quite a nice tench for you. Yeah. Could be. Oh, he's finally managed to hook a fish and keep it hooked on his left hand rod. For some reason, we've checked the hook and everything and we put a new hook length on. It just didn't seem to be nailing them properly. And this is a small mirror, maybe. Little chunky. Common. If you're wondering why I'm not using one of my Westies angling flasks, I uh, I drunk the brew that was in it on the way here. <laughs> it's in the car. Bleeding hell, he's in again, look. That's a nice bream, Dad. Could be biggest of today, that. A little bit of a slab. Yeah, that's a nice one. Little ghost. Little ghosty common. <coughs> Hold it up, let's look at it, Dad. Fish. Yeah, it will definitely. Maybe six or seven years. <laughs> I reckon technically I've had a lot more fish than you, Dad, like, because technically I'm only fishing with one rod because I've not had a fish on the underwater one. <laughs> Major disadvantages, folks. Major. <laughs> a few of you have said to me, Westy, you know, why do you never mention carp cur and carp spray and all the rest of it? Well, I do. I do use it. I use it quite regular. I just don't always film it. I have filmed it on, on some of my videos, but um, all you need to do is just get yourself some of this cheap stuff on eBay, uh, carp first aid stuff. And if, if a carp's got any sores or uh, a damaged mouth or it's bleeding, just spray a little bit of that on and you're good to go. And I, I still can't believe how many people that I've seen, even good subscribers of mine that are still haven't got an unhooking mat, they're only cheap you can pick one up for five or six quid don't have to be out special and obviously if you're landing a fish or you're taking a picture of a fish just make sure it's on a mat it doesn't have to be over the top it doesn't have to have sides or it could be a carp cradle or anything stupid just a light mat just so you can put the fish on it so there you go that's my bit done <laughs> well folks doesn't look like we're going to get any fish on our underwater cam we'll uh, be able to see what the bottom's like and uh maybe see some some fish on that and maybe feeding on the pellets and stuff like that so i'll give it a watch back when i get home and we'll see what we've captured but i'm going to take this off i'm going to swap that stronger line with a lighter line and then i'm going to get a method feeder on the other one so we'll be fishing double methods again then another bream dad that's into another bream easy as that we're ready to fish again Running out of pallets though, we'll have to mix some more of them up. Definitely misunderestimated how many I'd need. Oh, 
Well folks, this sun is absolutely beaming down now. It's a lovely day. It's uh, gone quiet fishing wise for the last half an hour or so. And as I've said to you on multiple videos, it always seems to be the way when the sun's highest in the sky and it's beaming down on the water. In my opinion, that is the worst time of the day probably to be fishing on the bottom. I think the fish probably come up in the layers a little bit and they'll, they'll be trying to warm up in the sun potentially or potentially it increases the water visibility so that they're a little bit more wary of the rigs i don't know i don't know what it is but it always seems to be the way in these commercials just dies off around midday uh, and then it starts picking back up about maybe half one two o'clock ish when the sun's moved around i don't know i might be making it up but it always seems to be that way well it's been about an hour no fish Nobody else on the lake's catching either. There's a couple of other anglers down the bottom. I think I'm going to have a recast. But yeah, it just died off all of a sudden. Probably, like I said to you before, due to the sun being bright. So I'm going to have a recast and I might try touch closer in. Well, the bream. Definitely a bit of bream day today. They're probably waking up now at this time of year. And they'll be thinking about spawning i would have thought i think a couple of the bigger bream <coughs> have had their uh spawning palpules on the heads i've just had a few bleeps on the right hand rod but other than that very quiet but i'm just enjoying the sun get some sun on my arms actually i think let me treat you let's do two giveaways in this session so for a chance to win a pot of Westie's glaze I want you to uh, suggest some goals for me for 2024 what should I aim for fishing wise is there a target species you want me to try for is there a weight you want me to try for I've got a few of my own that I want to do but I will do a special video on that and uh, i'll set some personal goals for the year and we'll try and achieve them just something for you guys to follow along with as well make things a little bit more interesting not that bite it's been a long time coming i think it's another brain to be fair yeah it is absolute day of the brains carp don't seem to be feeding today very readily anyway well folks, we're going to call it a day there and get packed up. It's been a much needed session after a month of being ill and not being able to get out. But we've had a good few silvers and stuff today, haven't we Dad? Yeah, we've not had anything really big or anything, up to three pounds on the cart, we're in each, yeah. something like that. Yeah, three, four pounds. It's, it's been the only small I think mine were biggest. Ones. Yeah, yeah, I think it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had uh, biggest tench, biggest bream, uh, biggest cart. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know, have you, have you had the most fish? I think, no, you, yeah, you have. I, I think, I, I think it's been, we'll have to count quite, some back. Been quite close as regards yeah. number of fish. And yeah. that. Really, massive. really consistent fishing, especially for a winter session. But it, it died off about, I don't know, about half 11 ish. Yeah, half 11, 12 o'clock. Yeah. So we're actually packing up a little bit earlier than we thought we would, but um, it just now it's happening. We've had a nice day though. It's, it's been really sunny, absolutely yeah, nice lovely. Day. And like I said, really well maintained fishery here at Wrightington. So if you haven't tried it, guys, come and give it a go. Really worth doing. Paul, the owner, keeps it well maintained. He's doing a bit over there now. But yeah, lovely fishery. Really recommend it. We always do, don't we? We're, yeah, I But even it, though we've yeah. not been in a while, because we've been trying different places and uh, we tend to stick to high haze through the winter, don't we? But Yeah, because it's a bit deeper and yeah. that. Yeah, a bit deeper and you've got a chance of a variety of species of good sizes as well. But I've had a good day. It's been well worth coming out. I've got to have dragged myself out of bed this morning. So, yeah, I just want to say thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you next West's Angling, won't we, Dad? Yeah, we will. And I just want to say as well, don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section and subscribe to the channel for a chance of winning the couple of giveaways that we're doing this session. See you later, folks.